years, the dream is about to become a reality. But to reach the top, they'll have to play the game of their lives. It's the return of the Emirates Airline Dubai Rugby Sevens. The passion, the power, and the glory. Be part of the action. Log on to DubaiRugby7s.com for tickets. Thank you very much indeed, and hopefully that just gives you a small taster of the excitement and the action on the pitch that we will have over the next three, two days. Now I'd like to introduce you formally to the gentleman on the top table. I'm uh, very delighted to welcome Richard Vaughan, Emirates Divisional Senior Vice President, Commercial Operations Worldwide. Thank you for joining us, Richard, on behalf of the title sponsor for the Emirates Airline Dubai Rugby Sevens. Sitting next to Richard, on his left, Mark Egan, IRB's Head of Development and Performance. Welcome back to Dubai, Mark. Nice to see you again. Next to Mark is Giles Morgan. Giles is Group Head of Sponsorship, HSBC Holdings, and the new sponsors for the HSBC Sevens World Series. Welcome, Giles, to Dubai. And, of course, Andy Coles, Chairman of the Arabian Gulf Rugby Football Union. Andy, thank you for being with us all today. Least, but, by, but uh, by no means less important, of course, is Gordon Titchens, a man who needs little introduction to the world of rugby and to Dubai, being a stalwart of the Seven Series and, of course, coach of the defending uh, champions here in Dubai. Uh, great honor to have you back with us, Gordon. We will be uh, also welcoming some more visitors as well. Stephen Betham, the man who led the Samoan side to the historic um, victory in the Seven World Series. Stephen is on his way, just back from from a training session. We also have a number of coaches with us in the rooms today, and correct me if I get some of them wrong, but uh, the uh, new Scotland coach, Graham Shield, is here. Um, Fiji coach is here as well, there's Graham, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, the Fiji coach is with us today, very welcome. And also the AGRFU team as well. All three teams, along with Gordon, who are competing for the ultimate prize this weekend. Now, I'd like to introduce Richard Vaughan, who will speak on behalf of the sponsor of the tournament. Richard, thank you. Thank you, Donald. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us as we look forward to the start of the Emirates Airline Dubai Rugby Sevens. 2009 was a landmark year for the Sevens and Dubai. In addition to the Emirates Airline Dubai Rugby Sevens, we hosted the Rugby World Cup Sevens, a showcase of the sport which we believe played a significant part in securing its inclusion in the 2016 Olympics. However, 2010 also promises to be a great year for the Emirates Airline Dubai Rugby Sevens. We welcome recent Commonwealth Games gold medalist New Zealand, while the fresh momentum given to the sport by the Olympics will drive the standard of rugby on display to new heights. Emerging talents in the 16 national teams competing now have even greater incentive to catch the eye and fans, both in the stadium and watching on TV, and they can expect to be entertained right from the kickoff. Last year, 86,000 spectators attended, and coverage was beamed to 140 different countries and watched in 255 million homes. This just goes to show the significance this tournament now holds in the local and international market and provides Emirates yet another platform to consolidate our position as a world force in sports sponsorship. Although we are proud of our global involvement in rugby, the Emirates Airline Dubai Rugby Sevens is particularly special to us, having witnessed it grow into the biggest event on Dubai's sporting and social calendar. It keeps growing every year and in addition to the 16 international teams who will battle it out for the Dubai title and a winning start to their HSBC Seven World Series campaigns, there will be over 160 invitational teams of all ages and ability who will play in 11 other tournaments on the surrounding pitches. None of this could happen without the support of many people behind the scenes. And I would like to highlight the efforts of the Arabian Gulf Rugby Football Union, who, as you all know, will be making their final bow this year. It was the end of an era, but one they can look back on with great pride as they have played an instrumental role in the evolution of this event, which is hard to imagine began on a dusty sand pitch with just a handful of spectators. Thanks must also be made to all the sponsors whose backing is vital. 
In particular, I would like to mention the main sponsors, Airbus, MMI, Rolls-Royce, Airbnb, Morgan Stanley, Crown Plaza, Dubai Festival, Festival City, and our co-sponsor, BBC World. A special mention must be made of the series' new headline sponsor, HSBC. His backing gives us yet another reason to believe that Game of Rugby 7s has a bright future. Emirates is committed to the continued development of the tournament and appreciates the ongoing support of both the local and international media who has helped to ensure this tremendous event keeps growing from strength to strength. My best wishes go to the players as without them and the thousands of passionate fans who turn up each year we would not be able to stage this amazing event. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And now to respond with a few words, I'd like to ask Giles Morgan from HSBC to address. Uh, many thanks indeed, and it's a real pleasure for, for us to be here. Um, HSBC is really very, very proud to be uh, the first ever sponsor of the World 7 Series. We've supported this event for five years at a local level, but to come in as the first headline sponsor is a, a momentous moment, I hope, for the sport as, as well as for the bank. Um, it's a platform that we want to help the game to grow around the world. This sport is all about emerging markets, about new markets, which is something that is dear to HSBC's own business. Um, and I think that the Game of Sevens, with the Olympic inclusion, really provides us with that opportunity. And we're looking very much to working closely with all of the tournaments um, in, in each of the eight venues, as well as with the IRB, to grow the interest in the tournaments around the world. Six years will go very, very quickly before Rio, and I think we're all enormously excited about the, the opportunity that the Olympic Games brings to sport. Uh, last year, half a million, spe uh, just under 450,000 spectators or so um, came to the uh, various events, and we hope very much that we can break the half million uh, mark for 2010-11. I think for those of you that saw the Asian Games and saw the interest in Rugby Sevens, um, and I think there were over 80,000 spectators for the Sevens. I think there's every chance that we can see record crowds. And we also look forward to working with you, the media, um, with whom the game has such an important role to play in terms of the growth of that. So uh, I look forward to working with many of you uh, during the, the months and years to come. And uh, thank you all very much. Thank you very much indeed, Giles. Now to answer, I'd like to ask Mark Egan from the IRB. Thank you, Donald. Um, good afternoon, everybody. It's, um, it's nice to be back in Dubai again, particularly after I left London very late last night uh, when it was minus 10 outside. Um, so it's nice to come back again. Um, and it's always exciting to be here for the, for the start of the, of the series. Um, I'd like to thank Richard, as usual, and Emirates for all the support that they give to Sevens Rugby and have given over the years, and uh, the support that they give the IRB as well in, in sponsoring the referees, etc. So, Great job, Richard. Thank you very much. And I'm sure it'll be an outstanding tournament again. And also to, to Giles, it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for Sevens uh, with the inclusion of the Olympics. And obviously now with the headline sponsor uh, for such a prestigious global company like HSBC to, to come into partnership with us and the commitment that they give to the sports that they work with, and not only in terms of the events, but also in terms of grassroots development. We're very much looking forward to working with you, as I know the other tournaments are as well. So thank you for your, your support. Um, I think it's a, it's a very interesting time, obviously, for us with, with Sevens and the inclusion in the Olympics. We are currently developing a new strategic plan for Sevens. Uh, we've been consulting with all our member unions. And obviously, we've had a lot of success in, in multi-sport games over the years. Um, Beth Coulter can tell you all about the success of the Asian Games recently. Uh, over 30,000 people at the venue on some days, and also the Commonwealth Games as well was very successful. Um, so we're looking forward to our participation in the Olympics. We're working with the IOC in terms of developing our, our international competition model, which will include the qualification process, and also we're obviously working with our unions to make sure that they take advantage of inclusion in the Olympics. There are 205 National Olympic Committees. Rugby has 117 Member, member unions, although Iran has just been accepted as an associate member, so that brings us up to 118. So we've about another 80 countries where we can actually take our sport to. And I think Sevens is one of the, the greatest tools that we have. I think it's one of rugby's greatest calling cards when you put a Sevens tournament in a, in, a, in a place. 
it leaves behind a great legacy and impression for our sport. So we're looking forward to the next few years. We're in obviously 2016 in Rio and confirmed for 2020. So we have to make sure 2016 is successful. Um, we'll be working very hard over the next six months to finalise the strategic plan and get it approved by our council next May. So it's an exciting time and uh, I'd like to thank Andy Cole and the work that the AGRFU have done over the years. Um, fantastic achievements in growing rugby in the region. We'll continue to work with, with Andy and all the people who contributed to rugby over the years here. We have a new governance structure coming into place obviously from January with the UAE Federation and we look forward to working with them as well to continue to grow the game. So, so exciting times, best of luck to all the teams, best of luck to Beth and all the, all the tournament operations people as well and Donald. Um, so happy to take any questions later on. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. And last, the last of the formal speeches, obviously, as was mentioned, this was the last season, the last tournament for the Arabian Gulf Rugby Football Union. And so to address us, Andy Cole. Thank you, and good afternoon to you all. Um, on behalf of the AGRFU, I would like to obviously welcome to this year's Emirates Airlines IRB Dubai Rugby Sevens. We'd also like to spend, send a special welcome to the present delegates of the Asian Rugby Football Union that will be joining us this year. This weekend will be an emotional one, not just for the players who will be putting on their Arabian Golf jersey for the final time in an IRB event, but for all those involved in golf rugby. With the International Rugby Board's restructuring of the rugby in the Gulf region, this will be the last occasion that the Middle East will play as one union. We hope that uh, you'll get behind the Arabian Gulf's side as they take to the field for the last time in the IRB event. I know the blood, sweat and tears that this squad has shed in preparation for this final campaign. The players, coaches and management team know what an important part representative rugby has played over the past 20 years in the development of rugby in the Middle East. And I know they will, will play out all the stops this weekend. So as the sun sets on the age of you and a new dawn approaches, we wish the UAE Rugby Association and the Qatar Rugby Federation all the best for their future. We are proud of the history and heritage of the age of you with our origin spanning more than 40 years in the Gulf. And we leave a legacy to be proud of. There's an extremely strong infrastructure of rugby talent throughout this, the region to support the national governing bodies as they set up and develop. I would encourage all to engage and work together in this new and exciting era in this sport. We know that the rugby community will always be on hand to help and support you. This is the spirit and ethos of the amazing sport that we play. We thank ARFU and the IRB for supporting a new structure that will allow the continuity of rugby across the Gulf so those countries without a governing body can continue to play the game. The age of you have far too many people to thank individually, so to all our past, present, age of you committees, staff and players at all levels, to the million youth sections, both clubs and schools, have grown tremendously over the years. And I must say it's an amazing sight if you visit the, the grounds around the region and see thousands of young kids playing. Um, to the mums and dads, the coaches, administrators, supporters, and the dozens of unsung heroes, to our referees and match officials, a huge vote of, vote of thanks. And we want them to know that we are proud of their contribution to golf rugby. We also thank our sponsors over the years, especially Emirates Airlines, uh, for their continued support of rugby. And to the media, again, Arfu, IRB, we thank you for your continued support. On a personal night, note, I'd like to thank all those involved in golf rugby over the last 40 years. We should be proud to know that we leave a solid platform for the sport to grow and a legacy second to none. It just leads me to say that I hope that you enjoy the weather, Mark, especially in the minus 10, the hospitality and all the action this weekend. Kind regards and farewell to the age of you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, fitting tribute. I'd like to also welcome Abin Gollings, who has just appear, arrived as well to the, back to the press conference. What we'd like to do now is open the floor to any questions um, uh, from the press.